Hello everyone, Basic Ollie here. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video. So, let's talk about Mercsport Games and the latest controversy that they seem to be involved in, and that is to do with the BTCC license. Ah, oh, s***. Here we go again. So, if you haven't heard, today I woke up and saw a statement from uh, Toka. Uh, they hold the license for the British Touring Car Championship. Uh, they released a statement earlier today uh, on their website stating that to protect their reputation and due to motorsport games ongoing fundamental breaches it was left with no option but to terminate its contract with motorsport games if you actually read the statement on the btcc website it is scathing right absolutely scathing and so it should be i personally believe that when the contract for the rights was signed back in 2020 toka fully expected a standalone btcc game but that never really happened. Instead, we got some cars that were added to our Factor 2, to which we just have to assume, if you are Toka, you are fuming. How? How did they think that was okay to even put it in the game? I'm so sick of this company. The trash! All right, you sign a deal with this company fully expecting to have a standalone game, but all you get instead is some, basically you just get some car add-ons to a game that was released back in 2013. Um, you know, you sign this contract, which you think will help boost the reputation of BTCC, but to actually just see it as just a quick add-on to a game that was released back in 2013. And to be honest with you, it's been full of issues ever since. You know, you'd be fuming. Uh, you would be you, you would be raging. Uh, I personally would be anyways. Um, so yeah. What's also awkward as well at the moment is that if you actually go and load up all oh, Factor 2, by the way, uh, the cars, the BTCC cars, are still the first thing that appears uh, when you load the game up. And another thing as well, if you currently go into R Factor 2 and go onto the store, you can still buy the BTCC DLC. Now, that's when I checked it this morning. That may have changed since this video has been released. But as of right now, me doing this voice have a thought of this video, you can still buy the DLC. Now, I don't know if this is going to stay. I don't know if you could just buy the DLC and then it will just never be updated. You've got the cars that are there right now. But if uh, they sign, you know, a contract with another um, company or game and they make the cars, then, you know, that that's absolutely fine. I don't know if it would just be a case of the current cars that are on R Factor 2. They will just stay the way they are. They just won't get updated. More than likely, I probably think that will be the case. But uh, yeah, at this moment in time, you can still buy the DLC on R Factor 2. So with all that being said, can you really be annoyed at Toka? Can you really be angry or upset with them for pulling on the contract? No, <laughs> I don't think you can be. Let's be frank. Uh, I think this should be a lesson to all motorsport franchises that, uh, that wish to work with this company, i.e. motorsport games. Time and time again, this company has shown that it cannot be trusted with the licenses it holds. I mean, it's clear to see. Previous experience shows just how badly things go when this company gets these exclusive licenses uh, and what they do with them and the games they make. I don't think we really need to talk too much about NASCAR Ignition Game, do we? Do we I mean, I mean, it's, that's been covered so much and it's so, so poor. It's just beyond words, uh, to be honest with you. And uh, yeah, the less said about that, better. But of course, they also do hold uh, the license for IndyCar as well. Well, who knows when the hell that's going to be going out, to be honest with you. That, funnily enough, was actually originally announced in 2021. Uh, that's when Motorsport Games got exclusive rights for IndyCar. Uh, and therefore, the Indy 500 on iRacing was no more. Um, and that was a very, very sad day for us iRacers, because the Indy 500 on iRacing... Uh, I only ever got to do it once as a special event, and I absolutely loved it. It was it was fantastic. It's a brilliant event to do. I don't touch IndyCar uh, apart from that one special event a year, but when I did, it was great fun, and I think that everyone uh, on iRacing the service just uh, loved it as well. And I think we were truly, I was gonna say, many people would have been heartbroken with it. I guess I wasn't heartbroken, but I was absolutely gutted it was gone because I only done it once and it was uh, it was truly brilliant. So uh, I suppose I'm just grateful that I managed to get uh, one attempt in, uh, I guess. And uh, yeah, that was uh, that was sad to see because it was yeah, incredibly popular uh, on the service. And uh, yeah, just seeing it go, that was a real kick in the old plums. That's for sure. 
Uh, that's for sure. But who knows? Maybe when the Cindy Car game comes out, it might be worth it. Well, fortunately, I used to believe that. But again, when well, the initial release date of 2023 was announced, it was two years ago, and that's already been delayed by another year. Uh, I feel I have no hope for this uh, at all, and I feel foolish for even having hope in the first place, uh, I guess. Well, what about Le Mans, then? Uh, what about Le Mans? Uh, they've got license for that as well, don't they? Uh, and they seem to be pretty... It seems to be pretty successful, doesn't it? Every year when they host a virtual Le Mans. And if you look at the viewing figures, figures um, you'd be right to think that. I mean, every every time we look at uh, the virtual Le Mans, for however long it's been around now, three or four years, uh, viewing-wise, the numbers are, are great. Um, and they put a lot of effort into it, and you can really tell the, the broadcast is is really, really good. Um, and it's got people from all around the world taking part in their real-life racing drivers, esports teams, um, some of the biggest con cre content creators in the world. But being honest with you, that's pretty much where it stops. Uh, if you've ever watched one of these events, uh, it is absolutely full of horrific server crashes and every single person that is normally in the event is complaining. Um, <laughs> They always seem to have these red flag scenarios where the server's crashed or it can't handle the rain. So, you know, the server crashes again um, or it gets it gets attacked, DDoSed. Everything you can think of, it seems to happen uh, when this event is broadcasted uh, once a year. I think every year we look forward to it and every year we're kind of just disappointed because the show they put on, the effort, the money that is pumped into it is quite extraordinary. Um... I don't know this. I don't know of another virtual event as such where uh, so much money and effort and just the production value is so high. It's just it's just let down every time. Um, and I think it was this year where we had uh, Max Verstappen. If you remember his his famous uh, rant about it and uh, how he said you know him and his team would practice for what, six plus months for this event, uh, and then yeah they were just you know through no fault of their own, just be out of the race or either a server crash or something and... Uh... It's amazingly bad luck. Well, this is just incompetence. They can't even, like, control their own game. And this is already the third time this happens to me now that I get kicked off the, the game while doing this race, so... It's also the last time I'm ever participating. Yeah, uh, he says he's never coming back. He's never coming back and he's been doing it for quite a few years now, uh, for Virtual and more, so... Yeah, that was, uh, that was scathing as well. So once again, another example of motorsport games having one of these licenses and just doing not a good enough job with it. Not a good enough job at all. Did a horrific job with BTCC. Didn't release a game, just made it as DLC on R Factor 2, which I have to assume was not very, very popular at all. Um, and IndyCar, we've got absolutely no clue what's really going to happen to that. It says 2024. And I think, if you, I think if you look up the actual stuff that's coming out for the game, it is the most basic of modes, like a championship mode and um, a few other things. Really, really basic stuff. So again, uh, a huge letdown. And then the virtual mall, which again, iRacing lost the license for. So you can't even do your own Lemons 24. Well, iRacing can't. It's not allowed to. Um, it's not allowed to host a special event at that track for 24 hours or whatnot. Even if you have R Factor 2, it's been well covered that you can't actually host your own 24 hours of Le Mans on that game. You are not allowed to do it, which is quite hilarious, I have to say. Um, again, just goes to show that whoever um, this, this motorsport games, whoever they're talking to, I, I don't know how they can just look at all this evidence and just... Well, clearly they're just not looking at it, are they? They're just I think they're just seeing the dollar signs. Uh, and, and that's pretty much it, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, um, it's a real shame. It's a real shame. Um, so yeah, what should Toka do with uh, BTCC now? What should they do with the license? Should they be looking to give it to someone else? Should they be looking to make their game themselves? Should it be maybe to look at other sims like iRacing? Uh, maybe even look at Gran Turismo or Forza Motorsport? Or should they just lay low and see what happens in the next few years, you know, with the experience they've had with motorsport games, so they just kind of just want to leave it now, just concentrate on the actual racing and think about maybe personally reaching out to another uh, company to make a game a few years down the line. Uh, personally, 
All I want is a license to go to a, a company that can do it justice. It's as simple as that. Whether that's a new company that can actually make the game um, or if it goes to, you know, a company that's already out there. Uh, let's take iRacing, for example. You guys know that I'm an iRacing fanboy with good reason. Uh, if you look at the license they hold and what they've done with them, uh, they are the clear leaders. I mean, look at IMSA on iRacing. They've got all the GTP cars now. Um, they got the special events. It is so... It's so good on iRacing right now, and it's only going to get better with the introduction of even more um, GCP cars, I believe, next year, like the Lamborghini. It's going to be absolutely superb. Um, and they've also got the NASCAR license as well, which they've recently uh, just got off of Motorsport Games as well. So it's another one they've got. Um, they, again, can prove that they can do... They've proven they can do amazing things uh, with the licenses. Uh, NASCAR is absolutely huge on iRacing. The fact they've managed to, like, base... I think they... They follow the NASCAR season uh, on iRacing, um, you know, track by track, which is absolutely amazing. To be able to do the track on the week of the actual event is is superb. Uh, so, yeah, big, um, big round of applause for that. Absolutely fantastic. If you're a big NASCAR fan, then I think iRacing is the only place uh, to go uh, with that. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but like I said, ultimately, I'd be happy for anyone to have it as long as they can make a decent game uh, with the license. Um, but, yeah, I don't personally expect iRacing... Uh, to get the license. I think well, they've got quite a lot on their hands. they kind of got like IMSA and, and NASCAR now that they're concentrating on. They're making a NASCAR game uh, on console, I believe, for 2025. I think they'll probably just want to concentrate on those for now. Um, and they do have their own version of touring cars at the moment. Um, so I don't think it will come to iRacing. I'd love it to, uh, personally, but I, I don't see it happening, uh, to be completely honest with you. Now, lastly... <sighs> With that all being said, um, we still have a game from Motorsport Games uh, to come at the end of this year uh, called Le Mans Ultimate. Initial screenshots and videos show it's making some good progress, but if you have seen any of it, you can't really help but feel it's just R Factor 2 with a different kind of skin and look about it. Uh, it really does feel like this game is going to be make or break uh, for this company. Uh, financially, we've all seen the reports and how much trouble this company in uh, this company is in uh, and I do personally believe that this game the more ultimate really does need to sell well um, will it be delayed will it sell the numbers it needs to will the game be decent or will it just be a huge server crashing mess hopefully by the end of this year we will find out but I hope you've enjoyed uh, this video a little update since uh, Tocca released a statement this morning. Let me know how you feel about it in the comments. Uh, do you want Motorsport Games to succeed? Uh, do you want them to crash and burn so that licenses go to other places? Or do you want the hate to stop? Do you want Le Mans Ultimate to be ultimately a success and to give them a second chance and see what they can do when they're given the money and the time to make a good racing game? Either way, let me know in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching my video. I've been Basic Ollie. Make sure you leave a like if you did and subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you for the next one. Take care.